Welcome to the Catholic Entrepreneurship and Design Experience monthly groundwork session. This is the only the second one of these that we've ever done, so we're very excited. Thank you for coming. This month, we will be digging deeper into module two, before you design your future, know your design. And specifically, we will be digging deeper into ENCODE, the assessment that we take in module two. But generally, think of these groundwork sessions as, your, as our small group work session. If we could be together in person, you'd Know those assembled here as colleagues who bring their knowledge and passion for learning to share and challenge each other. This group rather gathers to collaborate, share best practices, and challenge each other to not only improve how we deliver the seed material, but also to challenge the seed material itself to improve. We'll begin with a prayer, and then we'll get our hands in the mud and know that this work will bear great fruit in the lives of our students and ourselves. And so... Let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In the same spirit, help us to relish what is right and always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A couple quick introductions. You'll see, of course, a lot of familiar faces. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for being here. Uh, with me is Professor Rebecca Teddy, author, scholar, uh, wonderful human being, uh, <laughs> Very quick uh, with, the, with the good knowledge. She's actually been dragging me into poetry. I spent all day yesterday looking for pro good poems. And then our colleague, Professor Luke Burgess, author, uh, serial entrepreneur, and uh, just a great friend, person to have around. And I'll save the formal introduction to this gentleman here uh, below because I have his bio and there's a couple things. But uh, with us is Dr. Joshua Miller as well. So he's our very special guest. And so thank you all of those that are, are joining us. You know, the fact that we get uh, repeat customers and people that come back, that's a good signal from an entrepreneur's point of view. But uh, so for ground sessions, we have a few rules. So we have rules, folks. Rule number one, have fun. <laughs> rule number two, be curious, ask questions. Rule number three, suspend your disbelief. Rule number four, Collaborate. In fact, SEED is such a collaborative effort that we need your help. So one of the things that we have done is we have created for this session a shared notes. Hi, Stephen Schmidt. Welcome, Frazzati Catholic, everybody. So if you want, jump into there. There's nothing there right now, but this will be dedicated notes for all of us to share into posterity, and it will live just like this video. So with us is Dr. Joshua Miller. Joshua is the leader in the field of narrative-based motivational assessment. For the last 18 years, he has applied his expertise in a variety of applications, including executive search, organizational development, and talent management. And since 2010, he has served as a coach, helping individuals embrace and effectively leverage their own patterns of unique motivation. He is certified at the ACC level with the International Coach Federation, He's a co-developer of ENCODE, the first online assessment that blends a person's own achievement stories with established psychometric constructs. He's the chief education officer of Pruvio, and in that capacity, regularly offers ENCODE training and certification workshops. His long-standing desire to understand and help people develop their unique giftedness led to an MA and PhD in philosophy of the human person. He continues to effectively integrate learning from, his, from this study into his coaching and consulting practices. Now, this is the fun part. Joshua and his wife, Brooke, of 17 years, have six dear children. Joyfully Catholic, they are parishioners of St. Peter's Church in Steubenville, Ohio. Together, they share an interest in theater, music, and literature. And Joshua enjoys cultivating his orchard and has a special taste for fresh, homegrown, blueberries. I love that, Dr. Miller. How cool is that? Welcome and thank you for coming. So the plan is 
we are going to take advantage of having Dr. Miller with us to do a deeper, dig deeper into ENCODE. Those of you that were here in December for the two-day training, we got 30 golden minutes with Dr. Miller, and tonight we get an hour. So with that, I'm going to hand it over, but I know this. I get to be a bit of guinea pig tonight. So I get to be your host and MC, but also a guinea pig. So, uh, you know, that's where that whole suspend your disbelief came from. So you, you might be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Um, so Dr. Miller, to you. And, and John, be, before we get to Dr. Miller, I just, I have to say after the formal introduction, uh, just a, a quick word ab about Josh. I mean, Josh is a dear, dear friend of mine. Uh, we met almost a decade ago at this point. Can you believe that, Josh? It's Amazing, been about man. 10 years. Um, so I, I went through the process that uh, John is about to go through for the first time about 10 years ago. Um, and, you know, Josh is just a dear friend. It was transformative for me. Uh, that's why we're still working together. Uh, he's been, um, I, I'm the godfather to one of his dear children. Uh, and, you know, Josh's work is so important. And I'm just, it's just so good to see your face, Josh, and to, to have you with us tonight. And I look forward to uh, seeing what happens. Yeah, great, great to be with you, man. I have fond memories of us being together on the property that I had near the blueberries with chainsaw in hand, having fun together. <laughs> so with that, take it away, Josh. Great. Well, um, those, those rules of play are wonderful. Um, it's, it's great to be together with a group of people who have a hunger and thirst for, um, for their students and for cultivating your students. Um, and so I know that I'm, I'm with people that uh, can teach me a great deal. And I love to be a part of, of teaching in a context where I can learn a great deal. Um, and it's a fun context as well. Um, also, it's gonna be a context tonight where we're going to be able to exercise our own healthy curiosity for a number of things, including uh, our own stories and the stories of, of uh, those gathered here. So it's gonna be very interactive, I hope. Um, but we will have John as a central guinea pig. Hopefully he won't be a roast pig at the end of it, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, hopefully he'll have um, received some, some benefit from it. So, but we want it to be about giving you um, some real useful nuggets of application that you can take when you use MCODE in the context of the seed program. So that's really the, the, the significant takeaway. One of the first things that we're gonna do as a, a major takeaway is uh, an achievement story exercise. Um, it's certainly embedded, a story is embedded in, in, in MCODE. Um, and we recommend that you robustly use MCODE assessment. Um, but at the same time, this is also something that you can bracket and utilize in all kinds of different contexts for your students. And so we wanted to, to present you this as a, um, as a really foundational tool um, that, that again can be used in all kinds of ways. And I want you to experience tonight the, uh, the impact and effectiveness of drawing out and listening to uh, achievement stories. We also call them fulfillment stories, which we'll talk about in a little while. So here's what we'd like to do. Uh, I'm gonna take John through an exercise of drawing out his, his story of achievement, one of the ones he used in his report. Uh, then we're gonna review the prep form that we'd like you to apply for your students. There may be a, a seed adapted version of this, but it's essentially gonna be the same sort of prep form. I wanna review that for two reasons. One, because it's really, really important that as you take your students through MCODE, that they identify uh, the right stories, stories that are authentic to who they are. And as we're going through that, I want you to recognize the power of that, that little prep form for your students, but also for yourselves, because I want you to be identifying um, an achievement story or two that you'll then go on to share with your neighbor in the screen right next to you or above you or below you. Um, so after we look at that prep form, we're gonna break up into pairs and we're gonna do some achievement story sharing because we wanna give you the experience of, of the value of that and an exercise that you can walk your students through. Luke and I have seen so many times that this is an exercise that works really, really well. I think he's used this with you know, dozens or hundreds of students uh, in a large lecture hall um, and it works great. So after that, we're gonna break open John's report 
and I'm going to give you some, some overall highlights for how to walk students through an MCODE report. And even though we're going to be doing it one-on-one -on -one with, with him, um, this is something that you'll be able to do in a group context as well. So I've got a lot of documents I'm going to pull up. Uh, the first one is going to be um, the exercise that I'm going to walk you guys through in a little while, because I want you to be cognizant of the steps that I'm taking as I, I walk John through the exercise. Josh, would you like me to share that with them now? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you can pull it up on screen. I was going to do the same thing. Okay. I've got a shared link. Everybody can access it. And then you should be able to share if you want to pull it up. I'll do that. Yep. I will do that. And also, because this is a collaborative group, it's a small cohort, um, I want you guys to break in and ask questions and make comment as we go along. Okay. Okay. Can you see that? There we go. Looks like just the toolbar. There we, there go. we go. How's that? Beautiful. Okay, great. Good. Uh, now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that you can see the whole thing. Okay. Now this exercise is one that is described according to pairs. So at this point, John's not going to interview me, but I'm going to show you the first part of this. Um, and we are going to use a story that he's already uh, written about in his uh, MCODE report. Um, but you'll see that I'm very deliberate about uh, the kinds of questions that I ask um, and what I'm paying attention to. So um, we'll, we'll walk through this initially, then I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, actually, no, let me walk through this first of all, and then we'll do the, uh, the interview. Um, the first thing is that we're going to open up a story of something that John just enjoyed doing and believed he did really well. Okay, more on that later, but it's it's not any kind of story. It's a story where he's in the zone of a satisfying activity. Okay, and then we're going to go four or five minutes um, where I'm paying real close attention to uh, how he went about doing what he describes initially, right? I'm getting details of him in action. And if you were a part of the training that we did last month, um, we emphasized how, you know, in Catholic intellectual tradition, action reveals essence. And in order to truly understand a, a, a person, a being, you've got to see it in action, right? And so what John's going to be doing is sharing his action, and that's revelatory of, of, of essence, right? So as he describes um, what he's doing, I'm going to open up the verbs that he uses, very deliberately so. And then after we get uh, a good snapshot, a good little video of, of him in action, I'm going to ask him this question here, it's 3C. So what's so satisfying, John, about this? Okay, And I'm not going to forget that question because the fulfillment, uh, the joy, the real deep satisfaction that he has in his story, um, we need to hear that we can't take it through granted that we know it just by observation so he needs to reflect that okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take a minute or two and and reflect what i notice i want to give him an experience that i've listened to him that i've received him um, and want to reflect back some of what i heard but also the the sort of energy that he, that, that he had in the story uh, and then we're going to have you guys break up into pairs to do the same all right, um, so track along as, as I'm uh, speaking to John. Pay attention uh, to what you're learning about him. Also this, later we're gonna go back to the story with some of the language from his MCODE report and we're going to illustrate um, that the, the language from the MCODE report on the basis of the story. All right, so, uh, so pay attention to it. Okay, John, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, great. Um, so I'd like you to, to share a story from your report that you'd like to share uh, of, of a, an activity you enjoy doing, you believe you did really well. Okay. A couple of years ago, I was in a transition time with my career, and I had the opportunity through absolutely divine intervention to help a, a small startup nonprofit through a difficult time of transition themselves mm -hmm. and become their interim executive director. 
So they had uh, they they had lost uh, their in, their executive director to another opportunity, and they I, I just so happened to stop in and say hello to to the the last person that I knew that was working there, and I realized right away that she wasn't going to be there for very long. And so I reached out to my friend who was one of the founders, and I said, you know, Jim, you're gonna you're not going to have anybody here, and he's he's like, uh, well, what do we do? And I was like, well, I can help, and uh, lo and behold. I was, I was, unfortunately I was right. The, the, the final employee of that company got a job offer and we had, uh, he, he called me the next day and he said, you're, you're in, can you start right away? And so we had, we had five business days to transition as she was moving to that other organization. Um, so it was, it was really a great opportunity to use all of my skills and all of my background in nonprofit work and entrepreneurship and it also really did feel divine in that I was, I was there at the right place at the right time to really help some people. And, and, and it took, um, so, you know, long story short, it took a good, you know, six months for them to identify and hire and start an executive director. And I think they picked the right person. She was wonderful. And they actually asked me to stay on. But in that six months, I felt like the caretaker of, a, of an artifact, of a, an extremely valuable artifact. So this organization is called Embrace, and they support Catholic high schools, middle schools, K through 12 in the Archdiocese of Kansas City and Kansas by granting money so that they can then hire people uh, with backgrounds and, and uh, skills and training in um, special education so that they can be all inclusive. They can really welcome all learners. Well, and that's something the, uh, the, but, the, uh, the website beforehand looks like a great mission. You used a couple of, of, uh, of verbs that I want to open up. You, you said, I can help. Mm -hmm. uh, you said to, uh, I think a board member, and then I can use the skills you developed in non-for-profit work and in entrepreneurship. Um, to, to help this organization in a critical period of transition. So give us a snapshot of you in action, um, using your skills to help the organization as it shifted to a new director. What did Absolutely. you do? Absolutely. So uh, it, was, it was all hands on deck. They had, uh, it was in the, in the late or early spring. So it was, mm -hmm. it was grant giving time and there were events to be, um, coordinated and there were uh, big checks to hand out and there was marketing to do for that. And there was uh, also, uh, we, we had to do the 990. And uh, so 10 years of working in nonprofit work, I was only on the program side, but I had worked with all the other people that did all the admin and the operations and the marketing. So I had just enough knowledge to be able to, to know what to do and who to reach out to and access the support. So it feels like I did just about everything that, that a nonprofit does in the cycle of a year. In about the six months time, I helped to set up the interviews for the people that were interviewing for the job. I, I hosted a, a board meeting, maybe two um, and then, of course, man the phone when it rings and help people. And, um, and, and uh, we had a, a resource library. So I was checking out materials. It was literally, you know, chief chef and, and head bottle washer all at the same time. <laughs> I've used that same expression uh, myself. Um, give us a day in, 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 in the life of you uh, during sort of a, a peak day. When okay. you were in the zone, when everything was humming, um, what were you doing well there? So it was, um, it was the day of the award ceremony, right? So we had a very special mass celebrated that evening. And so all of the things that led up to that event going public and having, you know, people coming, principals coming, uh, teachers coming to be recognized and given big checks. So I had to, you know, uh, had to start the day just like always, you know, open up the door, be ready to man the phones, do the marketing for the website, but then in the social media, but then everything's pushing toward that event. So getting with the, the wonderful support people that were part of the board that were putting up, uh, that were picking up all the catering and, and then uh, meeting everybody and getting the, the big, you know, foam checks from the guy that printed those and donated them, God bless him. And, <laughs> and then getting to the church on time to let the pastor, to let the priest in and make sure he had everything. And he, of mm -hmm. course, he didn't want to know anything about the program until the day of. And, you know, of course, so I then have to like give a quick rundown of the show for him. And 
Um, and then of course, then, you know, it's, it's showtime and everybody's there and my wife is there, my daughter's there and the whole board is there and all the schools are there and it's, it's a mass and it went beautifully and the readings, I wrote the prayers, uh, and I'd never written the prayers before. And I forgot to put in there for the, the young man that was doing the, the prayers, uh, mm-hmm. that, um, to put in the line, you know, we pray to the Lord. I didn't put that in there. So the priest had to pipe up real quick at the end and then everybody knew what to do. And so there were a couple of snafus, get all, I was the photographer. I had to take all the pictures and then, uh, and it, and then there was a party afterwards and it was great. And then, so it was a 12, 14 hour day. Sounds that, intense, man. That was fantastic. So, and then it got really cold. <laughs> uh, um, there's so much more we could talk about because you were the chief cook and bottle washer. Yes. But, but as a summary, what was most deeply satisfying to you, John, about taking on this interim director role? I think that that organization um, would have survived. But I think if, if someone hadn't stepped in in that interim time, it would have been a really a hard a challenge in the uh, in the image and the court of public opinion about the organization being that they were just getting started and so what does it mean if they can't keep employees right they can give out money but they can't keep employees and so it was it was really important to me to to be there at that time and make sure everything got done um, and uh, make sure that there was uh, that there was somebody that um, was behind the scenes making it work. Hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Well, obviously it's such an intense time, a wonderful time of life. I just want to reflect a couple of things that I'm noticing. And one is that how consistently you use terms about um, being all hands on deck, right? And a, a lot of people were involved, right? You're, you're bringing people in, you got pastors, you, you got, um, you're marketing to others, you're, you're, you're um, talking to donors, et cetera but you're there at a really a central place um, doing what it took to keep the organization afloat. And uh, you saw that there was a great need for, the, for, for, for your service. Um, you wanted to be of help, you volunteered to be of help, and you were a help in such a way that you did a whole variety of things in order to keep it going. Um, and not only from an organizational standpoint, but also from the standpoint of, uh, of public opinion. Mm. Um, so that it, so that it didn't just survive, but 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 was able to launch successfully um, with with the next executive director. Um, so you 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 bring a lot of energy. You can hear the energy in your voice. Um, I usually don't have to interrupt, but I had to interrupt a couple <laughs> of times because there's so much there, right? Yes. Um, and you at the heart of it all in service mode. So those are some of the highlights. How does that resonate with you as a mini reflection of what you shared? I think you're, yeah. And I could go on and on and on. It was a wonderful, a wonderful time there. I learned so much and it was, it was very fulfilling. Awesome. Great. Okay. So that's a little tiny um, example of just drawing out the story of another person. Clearly a story that's, that's engaging John he was, he was uh, in a mode of expressing beautiful design that he has and really making a contribution. Um, one quick note is that even though these are stories of deep fulfillment and achievement, um, our experience, the experience that Luke and I have is that most often they're also stories about contribution at some level. And that's really important when we start talking about vocation. Mm. So what I want to do right now is I want to shift to the M code prep form. And I really, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this because uh, it's something that Luke has noted in past trainings. You can read it. Um, and also why well, I wanna be sensitive to time. Um, but I also wanna to touch base briefly so that you get primed up in terms of, of, of a story that you'd like to share as well. So I'm gonna pull that up on screen um, and note a couple of things before we break up into pairs. The first thing I want to note is that how vital it is for you to uh, properly prepare your students. Um, students are very sensitive to social desirability. They're sensitive to uh, conformity, especially, especially in a digital age where the forces of conformity um, are very strong. Luke and I write about that in our book, Unrepeatable. 
Um, so we've got to, to unburden them from uh, an assumption that the kind of story that they, that they uh, should share is one about conformity to uh, contemporary standards of success, right? Now, it may well be that they're going to talk about being in the National Honor Society and scoring 40 points during a basketball game and, and the sorts of things that, that note their, um, uh, their success in, in contemporary terms. But it's really, really critical that you get them to just focus in on um, an activity that they were, that were fulfilling at an authentic level. Um, so you got to spend time here uh, to, to disburden them from, if that's a word, um, from sort of a false notion of, of, of achievement. It's one reason why Luke and I often use the term fulfillment story, uh, but achievement story is the term that you'll see in the MCODE portal as they go to take the assessment. Um, so a couple things here. Um, the real criteria, it's a story of an activity that they enjoy doing, believe they did well, and found deeply satisfying, okay? This can come from any sphere of life, uh, any age as well, right? So it could be recreational, uh, school-related, church-related, community service, sports-related, family-related. Um, it's important, again, here that the activity be something that gave them a great sense of satisfaction. Okay, personally significant. So here are some summary examples of that. Um, and then in the, in the prep form, um, we give uh, the frame that the, that the students can use in order to jot down their stories, okay? So again, it's important to, to review this with your students. Now, any comments or questions at this point about what we mean by achievement story and the value of it? Okay, all right. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do a bunch of breakout rooms and I'm gonna pull up on screen the same achievement story activity that we had earlier, okay? And what I want you to do is stick to the script, okay? Um, and I'm gonna be the annoying one to break in uh, uh, after about five minutes and have you guys switch partners. So uh, spend about four minutes uh, on this exercise. Um, I'm gonna change this actually from five to four and from two minutes to one minute. So I want you to spend about four minutes um, drawing out your partner's story and then one minute of doing uh, ref reflection. So overall, it's gonna take about 10 minutes. Uh, in total, and you're going to see a lot of value of it. I think. Okay. Okay. So um, I've got I've got everybody assigned. Any questions you? before we jump in? I'll just pull it up on screen, John, so that they can see it as they are with one another. Okay. So I, I'll I'll break in uh, after uh, about four minutes and say, hey, switch switch in in about a minute. Um, then we'll come back together. Okay. Anything, John, from you before we before we launch? I will say that uh, for me, the most fulfilling part of this exercise as the interviewer was seeing the genuine joy. I, I, Diane and I were partners on Diane's face, in Diane's tone, mm -hmm. um, through her hand expressions. And we're even on Zoom and I caught all that. So I, I, I could only imagine how powerful that would have been in person. Mm. I can see the afterglow right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, that's wonderful. And that's the sort of experience that, that you'll cultivate for your, your students. Um, other comments? Probably just as an interviewer and listening also to Shannon that we were both we're both homeschoolers that so that was kind of interesting that we both ended up together. Um, but that, you know, when mom's out of necessity, we can really do a lot. <laughs> That's what I thought. 
Right. When we, especially with it, when it's for our kids, like we get out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so I think both of our stories is we stepped up and filled the need. And um, so that was just an observation about our two stories. But mm -hmm. I, 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 I would echo, I mean, I feel happy right now just talking about my story and listening to Shannon's. Mm -hmm. I, I feel, I feel inspired by listening to Shannon's because like that was incredible what she did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> so Michelle, a point there, imagine a young person who feels sort of insecure, right? And they're able to, to, to represent uh, a golden memory of really authentic action to a person who's really listening. Now, what does that do to a young person's sense of self-confidence, of being appreciated, loved, recognized, mm -hmm. right? And then as they speak, yeah. as they speak, they become more aware of the, the gift, right? Mm -hmm. um, other comments in terms of, of um, just the, the experience of seeing design in another person and getting to know the other person. I have a comment. Please. Um, I, we are part of this program, but I was en um, entering it with a homeschool set of mine because I'm a homeschooler and I'm preparing my daughter to, for her to teach my other daughter. She's in college and, and I'm to teach a high schooler. Mm -hmm. So with this exercise, I was already thinking in terms of our family first. And then I talk with Gina and she's telling me a story and I'm trying to, she's coming from a different, she's not a home, it's not a homeschooling story. So then here I am trying to understand the context first. And so I can imagine that if I were doing it with another group of kids, even homeschooling community, but they have a different family background, all that, it will, it will be an effort for me to, okay, get the idea. Why is it not just a fulfillment story for the person, but also when they start talking with it using terms. I mean, Gina was talking about, um, oh, what was that? The, um, the raising the scores or something. And she was using terms that, ah, oh, I had to find the context and then understand it. And what if the kid was using some, not slang, but just, you know, Gen <laughs> Z term. And I'd go like, oh, like my daughter saying Miss Rona. And I didn't know what Miss Rona was. And it was their way of saying Corona, the coronavirus, Miss Rona. I had to Google it before I could understand the context of the story. So, I think that would be a challenge. Yes, it could be. One of the things that Luke mentioned is that how much time do you do we want to want to give for this, or or do you recommend? And I think having a, a good chunk of time, uh, as much time as necessary, with students um, is is useful. But you can then follow up to get context. And if you're following up to get context about terms that are important to young people, that's a way to empathize with them in a way that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot more we could talk about in terms of, of the, the, the powerful use of something like this, but it is something that it's necessary for you to do, I believe, to effectively uh, review M code with, with your students. Whether it's a small group, one-on-one -on -one, uh, with, with um, you know, maybe your own children if you're homeschooling or in a large group, group context. Um, it's really valuable to open up the stories. But the stories are a part of uh, identifying themes of motivation, right? Um, in the MCODE assessment, we start with story and then uh, we go through uh, an assessment that identifies language of motivation uh, revealed by those stories, embedded in those stories. And so what we're going to turn to now is John's uh, report. It's going to look a little bit different than the M code report. We did a, a rebrand late last year. And so M core is what you'll see on this report, but uh, M code is, is now the new rebrand. Essentially it's the same thing though. So don't worry about any major change. Um, so this, the story sort of gives, gives birth or indicates, uh, the themes of motivation. And it's really important to have that language of motivation uh, for understanding design and then for the application as well for entrepreneurship. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up um, 
John's report and he, he went through and he did a highlighter exercise, which is the first application exercise in your report. And you'll need your students to do that as well. So what you'll see is that he's taken the top three core motivations and he has highlighted them. The green highlighter is an identification of sentences that really resonate with John. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to turn to one core motivation. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about where we see this expressed in his stories, okay? And I want you to pay attention to John's story that he shared with me and where we see evidence of this particular theme. So John, I'm gonna pull it up and I want you to just share with all of us what resonates with you in this theme, okay? Okay. All right, uh, at the top of the page. Okay, there we go, be central. So share with us from this paragraph what really resonates with you. Yeah, like right in the middle, the very first green highlighted piece, called upon, called upon. Um, when we talk about vocation, like this is truly, like it's right there in, in plain English. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I, I absolutely love to study and to and put in my life are structures. Um, and then of course, special problems that hinder the organization. Mm -hmm. And then the last green that I highlighted uh, was problem solver. I think that that, that is, at the heart of what it means to be an entrepreneur, to be a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And then down in the positive behaviors and attitudes, you know, systems and details, uh, range of hard and soft skills, structure and plan and manage and maintain. Mm -hmm. those, those just spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm, curious, I'm curious, John, the first sentence is fairly definitional. Um, any reason why you didn't uh, note that? you're motivated to be a key person who holds things together and gives them meaning or direction. Yeah, for me, it's the, the idea of being central is not about, about me. Right. Okay. And I felt like the first, the first sentence was more about the me, the person being key. And, uh, okay. and to me, it's more about being the, the guy behind the organization, the, the, the person who's, who's helping everybody else to be successful. Okay. So you, 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 the idea of being the, the golden go-to guy um, uh, who's up front didn't appeal to you, um, but the idea of being behind the scenes does appeal to you. Yes. So being important, but behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. And you'll right. notice that in the, the first yellow highlighted, indirectly responsible for su success. I think that's, you know, I want to see other people succeed. I want to see, you know, your you guys succeed. I want to see their their students succeed. That's the the greatest achievement that I can imagine. Okay. All right. Um, so it's not as if every sentence is going to fully resonate with with a, a client, with your students, with your your children. But what we want them to do is to start to play with the language, in the sense of grapple with it, highlight it, uh, make it their own. Right, so the first application exercise that you'll need your students to go through is to uh, look at the, the, the top motivations. They're gonna choose three and they're gonna highlight those. Um, but then we want to ground it in the narrative, okay? So we're gonna use the language of be central, defined as John does or emphasized as John does. And I wanna hear from two of you um, in John's stories, um, where did you see evidence of this motivation to be central in the way he's described here? Yeah. So think about, about the story as you shared it. Yeah. So it, it, like he talked about the embrace, um, needing the momentum that he was able to provide. So, um, coming in and, and bringing that, that thing, that missing piece, it had a good, a lot of good things going for it, but was missing that momentum that seemed key for him. Absolutely. Right. That nails it or at least a key part of it. What else do you remember from his story uh, as, as applying to 
what we see here, evidence of being central. Are we looking at the motivational polarities? Like the, I, sure. Like, you know, sure. because when it says doing all they can to meet the needs, solve the problem or deliver the goods, because he was, he was like, uh, and from answering phones to writing the prayers to making like he wore all the hats. Yep. So I think he right there, you could see that in the different things that he was doing for the organization. Like the, no job was too small. Right. Or too big. Right. That's the impression I got. Absolutely. So that, that story has the fingerprints of be central all over it. Now we want to be sensitive to John because he doesn't, he doesn't want to be the, the guy who's you know, on, on center stage and gets all the limelight. He likes to be in a service mode. But the fact of the matter is it was, it was riding on him, right? He was the chief cook and bottle washer and, and made the thing happen. So it was hub of the wheel. Right. He was central to it, um, even though he delighted in helping to, to give momentum to that organization. Right. Now, I want to pause here for a bit. And, John, um, what what do you see? What connections do you see between the story that you shared and be central? Specifically, um, none of this works without trust. Mm-hmm. I mean, nothing like the whole world breaks down if humans can't trust each other. And when, uh, you know, looking at the motivational polarities there, the, the living up to the trust and responsibility placed on them, um, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, you know, the, the inserting myself and the timing and the just a phone call and a, and a stop by, that would have never happened if I didn't already have, you know, the relationships with these people, it was never about the organization. It was about the people. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, that has shifted for me uh, in the last, I think, five years of my, you know, my life and the way that I go about working with other people. I think I was, you know, if 10 years ago, it would have been the Johnny B show. Like I was happy to be the guy. And I got every 360 review, I got beat up about humility and, and I, I, that will haunt me forever, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think that was what was so revelational about, re- revelational about taking the M code and getting this result was it's like, here I am, you know, here I can see finally a version of myself mm-hmm. that is able to serve and not be so like caught up in their own, you know, vanity or, or pride or, you know, it's something that I could really hang my hat on. Yep. Now, one of the things that I strongly encourage um, is something like this. It depends upon the spiritual maturity of your students, but all these themes of motivation are from Christ, the Logos, right? Without whom nothing is created. All is created through the Logos, right? So all these themes of motivation are found in Christ. So one of the ways that we can embrace them um, is by pointing out in sacred scripture or, or in the epistles, right? Where do we see Jesus expressing these different motivations? Does Christ ever show himself as somebody who wants to be central? Of course, right? Um, so all those themes of motivation, we can identify them in Christ. And because we are image bearers, it's a great way for your students or your children to see these themes of motivation in him, And then the the dignity and duty and responsibility of expressing them in their own lives in a way that um, is is life-giving. Now, you've got your report, right? Your students have their reports. Um, One of the very simple profound exercises is for them to share stories with one another and then have them identify one of the themes of motivation in their M-Code report that they'd like to to share and then make a connection between that motivation and the stories. So we're doing this this with John right now, but it's the sort of thing that I highly recommend that you do with your students. Um, Maybe they're doing all three primary themes, Um, but if you don't have a whole lot of time or you're sort of gradually unpacking, then what you can do is have them identify one one primary theme of motivation. And then what they do is they share it, they describe what resonates, and they draw a connection with the story. Now, 
if these kids know one another well, then the other kids can also reflect on where they have seen that motivation expressed in the life of that young person. And that is also very affirming. So John, if we bring up the Blues Brothers band that you served in another one of your stories, and we ask the Blues Brothers guys, where do we see John being central? Or I ask Luke um, about this, right? Where do we see John being central to the whole seed program, right? Then other people give color about where the themes are expressed. And that is team building, it's affirming, it gives greater evidence of the power of the motivation in action, okay? Now, um, we're gonna look very, well, we don't really have time for that, but you, you, get, you get the rhythm here, right? You look at each theme of motivation um, and then you illustrate it based upon the narrative. So this can be done one-on-one, -on -one. it can be done in, in groups, um, there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to parse this out. Because of time, what I wanna do now is I wanna to turn to the second application exercise. So after they do the highlighters and after they choose the, the themes of motivation that really apply, what we ask them to do is to write here on the left-hand column, which themes of motivation they wanna share. And in MCODE, we give the top five and have them choose three, okay? So here are the top three, and then the words that really resonate, okay? This is where they're, they're, they're starting to um, own these themes of motivation, okay? And then what we have them do is craft a statement which pulls it all together, because we want uh, each client, each student to, to understand their motivation in an integrated and harmonious way. Um, this is a, it's, it's a challenging thing, but this is a great exercise for helping pull it together. Okay, so John, t give us the sentence that you came up with. Yeah, uh, that with the misspelling and all. Um, I tried to change I, that for you, brother, but I, I couldn't. Thank you. No, thank you. I, I think you understand what I'm saying. So this was so much fun. I am fundamentally motivated to help people to be more productive as I adapt and learn. Okay. Um, and where do we see that expressed in seed? You're asking me. I'm asking you. Um, it, it is all about uh, finding where the bottlenecks are, filling in the gaps. Where's the pain? Mm -hmm. um, where can I serve all the different customers and not, you know, not just the teachers, the students, but also my colleagues, where can I serve them? Mm -hmm. Where, where is their pinch point? Where is their bottleneck? Uh, how can I free them up? Because they are capable of so much more productivity. If, if they can, if I can relieve some of that, you know, if I can help them uh, to focus on their, Comparative advantage, that's, that's a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. I noticed too, what you wrote about and what you've, um, what, what was also in your stories is doing that in, in a systemic way, in a well-organized way. Um, so it's, it's paying attention to people, but also people that are working together. Um, there's, there's an organization, there's a system, there's a, there's a sense of flow. Um, and we certainly see that with seed, right? Um, it's hard for me to, to um, unbundle these three now. My perfect. three top motivations are so, so tightly intertwined. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, going through this exercise, especially with the highlighter piece, there's so much repetition and overlap of the three of them. For me, this is the, it's like my unified theory of me. <laughs> Great, wonderful. So um, I want to shift gears um, and just give you sort of in shotgun form um, some tips and tricks uh, all, all together, but particularly how to apply this, this exercise. Um, and 
In fact, I might just do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up what we call a coat of arms exercise, which is really fun. Um, so as I'm pulling it up, what I want to share with you, though, is that there's all kinds of ways you can use that integrated statement for application. Okay. Um, one of them is helping kids craft a mission statement that's authentic to who they are. Right. So these themes of motivation are abiding, uh, innate, enduring themes of motivational design. And so it stands to reason that the mission statement that they have right, is going, ought to be consistent with that pattern of design. So you can use this integrated statement for that sort of a thing, creating a mission statement. Um, another point of application is, um, is leadership style. If you're using M code for leadership development, um, people are trying to understand their modes of influence and leadership that are best. Uh, well, if they craft uh, a statement of leadership style, it's consistent with that, that motivational drive. That's, that's ideal. Um, the kind of entrepreneur that they're, they're going to likely be, um, the sort of design that they wanna to bring to the world, it's gotta be reflective of their design right, which is module two of C. Now, another exercise though, is what we call the coat of arms exercise. And this is a way for students to get their creative juices flowing and to incorporate insights from MCODE with other aspirations that they have, you know, virtues that they are about. Um, uh, values that are important to them. Um, so I'm going to pull that up on screen as well. We have for you uh, a whole worksheet that is about the coat of arms exercise. So I'm not going to get into all the details, but what I want to share with you is what I share with, with students at CUA. Okay. Here's what it is. <laughs> now, my own motivation is to comprehend and express as I influence behavior and make an impact. But I, for the sake of, of brevity and for showing the kids an example, I just included influence behavior, All right? So here's a coat of arms. For me, wisdom is, 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 a, is a real value and an aspiration, right? Um, I'm, I'm drawn by the virtue of wisdom. I want to be wise. And that's so fitting with somebody who wants to comprehend and express. But I'm also really interested in teaching. I love to influence behavior, right? So I had some fun here with the owl on the book, right? Uh, my, my integrated statement around comprehending, expressing, and influencing behavior. And as you know, I love blueberry bushes and orchards, and I love the whole cultivation of growth, mm. right? So that's important to me. But there's a, a whole lot here in this, in this activity around using that integrated statement in a very creative way, a hands-on creative way. Um, so that's a whole day that you can use with your students and it's just a lot of fun. Any questions about that before I go to a final slide? So. Go ahead, John. What I notice about your coat of arms is it's very simple. And complete, yes. right? It's very simple. Thank you for that. I, I have this elaborate, you know, everything's always got to be so elaborate in my mind. So thank you for that. That was <laughs> freeing. <laughs> but it, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly simplistic. And I, I mean that sincerely and not with any false humility. I mean, I just, I love my job. Besides blueberries, it's, it's my hobby, right? I've always loved reading books and talking about design. Pretty soon. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> right. That is awesome. Uh, all right, I want to pull up some slides. Now, you got sort of the look and feel of MCore. I just want to introduce you to the look and feel of M code because you're, this is what you're going to be experiencing um, when you take the assessment and also um, take your students through it. Okay, so we did a big rebrand. Um, and M core has become motivation code. Uh, powered by story. So that's just a little bit of the look and feel uh, of MCODE. Now, some general tips and tricks. You can take a picture of this or just use the slides, but, but, but sort of an overview of, of tips and tricks. Um, you're gonna have to explain motivation to your students. Why is this so important, right? Um, 
So the book that Luke and I co-write is called Unre- co-wrote. It's called Unrepeatable: Cultivating the Unique Calling of Every Person. There's a lot there about the characteristics of motivation. Uh, please get that book. Use it. Um, it's it's written at a level you're, where your students could also appreciate it. Also, but there's a lot there around the meaning of motivation, intrinsic, innate motivation, right? Um, so why that's important. So spend some time there. Um, Look at the M code prep form. That's the second bullet point, right? So you've, you've got that document because it's really critical for them to identify good stories and to take the assessment carefully. There's a lot of different ways to do the achievement story sharing. They can break up into, into pairs. They can break up into, into small groups. And what they're doing is they're sharing that achievement story with one another, uh, reflecting on what they notice in empathy, which is really critical. And then they're seeing connections with one or more motivational themes as we did today. Um, Use exercise one and two minimally to help them clarify uh, the motivations that are important for them, get some ownership, um, but also see the integration. And then you can use exercise two for all kinds of different application exercises, right? The coat of arms exercise, um, mission statement, sort of entrepreneur, um, that they believe they could be, which is obviously such a vital part of the whole seed program. Um, now, because you are uh, not having the benefit of, of, of uh, several sessions of review, you can also use, that's what the report looks like, you can also use this book, Motivation Code, that um, describes a lot more about the different motivations. So it's, it's kind of a resource manual and you can use the book for that. So when your students go on to, um, to take the assessment, they'll see some more um, information about, about the book. The other thing I wanna notice is this, note to you, is that as your students take the assessment and as you do as well, because you really need to do that, there's a bunch of videos on the Motivation Code site available for them to just unpack the report a little bit deeper. Um, And you can use those creatively um, in your own curriculum. Um, So that's a little bit more about uh, the motivation code and how to to apply it. Now I wanna back off right now and just see if there's any questions. Um, I felt like I was pouring a lot on you, but um, we wanna back up now for questions. So we just did this with our students today. Um, Great, how'd it go? They, just, they took the M code today. Uh, we'll get more feedback because <laughs> um, we kind of like ran out of time at the end of class as they were finishing it sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I already got some, cause I, I am the swim coach too. So I went right over to practice and some of the seniors, the girls really dug into it. Um, and they, they're already talking about it and what they what they liked, what already stood out and resonated with them mm-hmm. immediately. Uh, and so they're getting a lot out of it so far, just in the little feedback that I've gotten. It's great. But we're trying to, um, with the boys, we were trying to figure out maybe we should have uh, done, laid the groundwork a little bit better. Uh, to build those interviews up because the interviews that they they did with each other the girls took naturally to the boys some of them did a good job and some of them didn't Mm -hmm. one of the things I think is valuable is if you have subgroups uh, of of students let's say you've got you've got I hate I hate to categorize like this but you say you got the football players and athletes right and if they know one another well and it's really really important to them helping them leverage that awareness and that excitement that they have about that activity with how they play together, how they team together, how they show up together. Mm. Because you're, then you're tapping into the heartbeat of real interest and they will see connections um, once, once we tap into uh, those areas of, of real passionate interest. Yeah, so does this, I mean, I still need to take the M code and I was going to discuss with my husband, I've been doing the packet and then my son, who's a junior, oh, I think I'm, oh, no. okay, my son, who's a junior, he just listed his 10 
possible stories. And so I, I, I need to get ahead of him a little bit before we really refine and figure out his top three stories. But am I going to be writing my stories into the assessment? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a written exercise after you've, you know, done a verbal expression and done the interview and the groundwork, right? Yes, it is. Now, it's not critical for you to write a whole lot because the assessment doesn't work on artificial intelligence or looking at content of stories. It works on memory. Okay. Right? So, so the stories are important for prompting you, but also for those doing the, the review session. Um, but you'll think about your memory of the story and then respond to a bunch of statements of motivation and, and how deeply satisfying they were on a 10 point Likert scale or if they okay. didn't apply at all. That helps. I'm trying, he's a little, um, you know, he wants to see the end product of this. I'm definitely more passionate about all of this than he is right now. And he just wants to get to the end. And I said, you know, so is this going to be a big written assessment? I mean, I, I'm just trying to get it out of him, like get these stories out of him and mm -hmm. I'm considering drawing his girlfriend into this because she's very interested. And I think <laughs> when you just mentioned how the the girls are all about it and, and she says, oh, Never the girlfriend. Shannon. Yeah, she, I, I think I'm going to because I've been sending her the case studies and I'm like, why don't you read this? And she's like, oh, this is amazing. So Great. I think I am going to leverage her. Yeah, leverage the girlfriend. Okay, um, there's a lot more we could talk about, of course. Um, it's, it's, of course, ideal for you all to get certified in MCODE. It's not necessary at all, um, but it, it will help. It would help you to, to go deeper with it. But you can do so much with just the achievement stories and unpacking the report in some, 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 some critical ways. So um, I don't want you to feel like you're, you're not going to be able to run hard and well just on the basis of what we've talked about right now and then the additional training and resources that um, John and Luke will provide. That is excellent. Thank you, Josh. Thank you yeah, so can much. Oh, can I just ask one question? I'm Michelle, so sorry. Please, please Michelle. Um, on the certification, I remember that that was kind of talked about when we were doing the training in December. What kind of time commitment to do that? Like, because my daughter won't be a junior until the fall. So we were looking at starting this, like getting kind of starting in the, in the summer and working, like really digging in in the fall. So if this is something I could do, leading up to that. So I don't know, for anyone that's gotten certified, what is the kind of what time commitment? Yeah, Luke, do you have an initial response to that? And then I can add something. Yeah, the um, if you were to sign up on the Motivation Code website for the uh, first level of facilitation, I believe it's a $79 monthly charge and you can cancel right. any time. Um, it's a, it's a self-guided training program and Josh, because that's new in this format, I'm not sure approximately how many hours it takes to work through that whole training. So I'm not okay. sure if I can answer that. Yeah. Okay, great. So that it's, it's about um, all total about 10 to 15 hours. Oh, okay. It's that's so doable. Time, but okay. of, of um, practicing it and working through uh, uh, review sessions with other people, impact sessions. Sure. Okay. Hard. Thank you. You'd go, you'd go to Luke to get set up there with, with yeah. a link. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And then what I'll be doing is providing content for MCODE in a personal vocation context uh, in, an ongoing, in an ongoing way. And that's all available to you. Yeah. And, and just to add one thing, there's so much you can do around um, group exercises with the MCODE which we already think that module two is the meatiest module in, in all of seed. So we, we didn't include a, a lot of group exercises. Uh, but if you're interested in that, we, we have that material available. We can share exercises and worksheets with you if you would like to do that. I think Josh's suggestion uh, about integrating it into, you know, guys that play in a team, it makes mm -hmm. it come alive for them. So we, we have some experience doing things like that. And if you're interested in some of the group work, as an add-on to what's already a large module, just let us know and we can share that with you. It's cool for me to see, for instance, John, it was my colleague, uh, and so important for me to know what his MCODE is because as, as, we work together so closely. So mm -hmm. he's a B-Central and so am I. And, and I see the way that 
you know, he is manifesting all of his top three core motivations. And he has just jumped right into one of the classes that we teach at CUA really without being asked because he saw a need to be filled and is just adding a ton of value and improving it. And, and it's, so it's, it's really a joy to see that, but it's also helped me see where I have to shift my be central uh, to, to manifest itself in a slightly different way because John has the same core, to make, core motivation as I do. So I, I think what we, the, the deeper you go into this, the more you'll see different uses for it. And the group exercise is just one of those. We're happy to share that with you in the times, right? Yep. Shannon, I was going to share, you should totally see Luke's achievement stories. They're like one line. It's like, did this thing, yeah. wrote a book, I think it was yeah. one you, line. They're power packed though. They're one liner, but they're power packed. Yeah. Right? Wrote yeah. a book. You know, no, no, nobody, nobody's, nobody's keeping track of the word count <laughs> yeah. just for you. So, you know, for what that's worth, but to echo Luke's point, you know, knowing, the, especially the people that you work with, knowing what their motivational drives are, you know, especially for me thinking about serving him as a customer of mine, you know, I, I know exactly what to shoot for and what he's, how he's going to, what metric he's, he's looking for as far as value. So. Um, I love that idea of the, of the football team thinking about each other. And, you know, that's, that's how that game is played. I mean, uh, you know, I'm going to date this video, but go Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, what a great, well-integrated football team we're going to see become second repeat champions this Sunday. So. <laughs> great. Okay. And then at well, the end of the day, what we're doing is we are loving our students. Yeah. We are helping them to – be who they are, become who they are, uh, a unique image bearer about sanctifying the world in, in the businesses and, uh, and, and the, the, the life work that they've been called to. And that's a massive gift, desperately needed, and you're helping to cultivate it. And so we're very enthusiastic about uh, this very special approach to um, have, having young people just shine. Absolutely. And, and if um, let me just add, since um, John mentioned it, if you really want to engage the boys and if they like sports, have them pick some hero of theirs. Okay. Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, or it doesn't have to be a, an athlete. It can be anybody and, and have them write up. What do you think are their top three core motivations? Perfect. What, what are, what do you think Tom Brady's top three core motivations are and why and, and defend your, your choice. So that helps them understand all 27 motivations and, it can be anybody. It can be an actor, an actress, a historical figure, Martin Luther King. It could be anybody. So um, I'll throw that out there as a as another project that can make this come alive for people. Uh, and um, also, sorry, go ahead. No, I I think that's a really really cool idea. Is there anywhere where you can see all twenty seven motivations in one spot? Josh. So that's it on the reports the, in the appendix. Um, there is such a thing. Um, so all 27 are listed. Um, but one of the things we did years ago is you may have this, Luke, is, and this is all based on real data. We had thing, something called 27 little leaguers, right? And based on, on a real life achievement data that we had over the last couple of decades is you get a lot of stories about little league, but for very different reasons, right? And so it's cool to see something like that where, someone can approach a game that everybody's familiar with from, from very significantly different angles. So I'd be happy to share that with you guys. As yeah. And, oh yeah. And, and Josh, there's some additional content that you remember those videos you produced, you did one on Florence Nightingale and, and a, a lot of historical figures. So I, yeah. I, I it, it's out there. I think we just need to figure out um, what we can share, right. but it, it's a, yeah, well, so we'll, we'll try to get you what, what you would need for the students to, to do a report like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Josh, uh, thank you, brother, so much for being with us and taking the time today. This is invaluable. Glad to be with you guys. It's, it's exciting to see uh, you all use MCODE in a, in a fresh, uh, generative uh, educational context. It's awesome. Well, our undying gratitude, not only to Dr. Miller, but to all of you for the work that you're doing uh, checking in on the rules. We had fun. I had fun. I mean, I, I had a ball. Uh, we were curious. We asked questions. 
we suspended our disbelief at least as much as if we were going to go watch a Marvel superhero movie for 90 minutes, probably more. And a lot of that has to do with our own abilities to carry that, this work forward. So we, we need to believe in ourselves and believe in the Holy Spirit and co-creation that we are doing in this work. And we want to say thank you to you. We hope to see you again. We, have, uh, we always have our fireside chats every third Thursday of the month. And then again in March, we will be doing um, the module three for the groundwork session that first week of March. And we'll be sending out newsletters. And if you need anything at all, I am at your service. Help me fulfill my vocation and to be of service to you. And if you need anything in the meantime, just let me know. So thank you so much, everybody. Be blessed. And we'll, we'll talk again soon. Thank you so much.